Hello and welcome to YouControlIt.tv. This is our first episode of our new series of videos looking at microcontrollers. This is a very exciting area that is becoming increasingly popular. And um, we got into microcontrollers because it was something that we wanted to do here in the TTFN TV studio. But more about that in a minute or two. Now, if you remember back to your days of physics, perhaps you did a little bit of basic uh, electrical electronic theory, you'll remember that that funny U symbol or the mu is the sign for the micro. So the name of this show really should be micro control it, but it's equally valid to call it you control it because this is all about you controlling the things around you. Now this is going to be a resource for anyone wanting to experiment with connecting devices to the physical world by using the various microcontrollers that are available. So what are the sorts of things you could do? Well, you could build an intelligent controller to turn on your Christmas lights or your main lights. You can even control them from the internet. You could build projects that can update a website and that might be to tell you that somebody's opened your front door from your security system or it might be you just want to keep an eye on the weather. Now, 3D printers are pretty popular these days in a really growing area, and most of those are controlled by off-the-shelf microcontrollers. One of the areas that really excites us and it looks like great fun has been the use of these microcontrollers to give intelligence to radio control models. You now have helicopters that will hover by themselves, will fly various pre-programmed courses because they're linked to a GPS or even have a camera underneath so that you can do aerial video work or photography. There really is a lot of things you can do. Now, the thing that we wanted to do here in the studio and the thing that got us into using these microcontrollers was to be able to control a computer by emulating a keyboard or a mouse. Now here in the studio we have a central piece of equipment and when we're setting up things in the studio we often have to go back to the control desk and hit a button to change their camera or change some setting and we thought wouldn't it be great to be able to do that remotely. So a little bit earlier I just put this little bit of a demonstration together of what we affectionately call iPeter. One of the things that we wanted to do here in the TTFN TV studio was to find a way to control some of our equipment with an iPad. And that way it would save us time when we're setting things up because we were always having to go back to the control desk and press various buttons to change cameras or adjust various settings on our studio equipment. So we looked around and we came across these various microcontrollers and we had the brainwave of thinking, well, if we could get a microcontroller to pretend to be a keyboard and send the commands to the studio equipment, and we could find a way of connecting an iPad to the microcontroller, then we'd be able to do what we wanted. So we looked around on the internet, and there is some interesting information, but not a lot of it is that useful. And we eventually developed our own solution, and it has been fantastic, and we are now a great fan of these various microcontrollers. So all we have is a little box like this with a microcontroller and an ethernet daughter board in it. The ethernet is connected to our, our network, which includes our Wi-Fi router, and the USB connector is connected to our studio equipment. We then have an iPad running some software called Touch OSC, which you can buy in the App Store and download. And this allows us to design screens and create a layout of the keys that we want to be able to duplicate from our main studio equipment. And this works really, really well. And it's just to show you, if I want to show you our producer sitting at the control desk, I can just hit a button and <laughs> there he is. Or bring it back to me, I'm sure you've had enough of him. All right, so that's it, it is really neat. We uh, developed it using one of the microcontrollers that we are going to feature. And I hope that gives you an idea of the sort of things that you can do. So that project is really useful for us here in the studio and does save us a lot of time. 
One of the other really good things about it is that it wasn't particularly expensive because you might be sitting there thinking, oh, this all looks good. It looks exciting. It looks interesting, but it's they're probably pretty expensive. Well, the really good thing is that in the last few years, several organizations have got together and have started producing these microcontrollers as open source at relatively low cost. And you can buy some of these microcontrollers from £10, $15 upwards. So it is not a particularly big investment for the fun that you can have in return. The controller that we use was probably in total about 50 or 60 pounds, 75 to 90 dollars. And that includes the Ethernet and the connectors and the case, etc. And it really has saved us a lot of money. Now, I've got here on the bench three examples of different controllers that we are going to talk about at different times on newcontrolit.tv. And they are as an Arduino Leonardo, probably the most popular controllers amongst uh, hobbyists, a Teensy Duino and a Raspberry Pi. So let's talk about all those in turn. It's well worth having a look at Arduino.cc, that website. That's, they're based in Italy and they are doing a great job of creating these microcontrollers, both the hardware and the software that you need to program it the development environment in which it's pretty easy to write your own software. And the really good thing about the Arduino folk is that it is open source, not only the software, but the hardware as well, which means that other people can take their designs and implement them in other projects and be innovative and do different things, make them bigger, make them smaller. Earlier, we mentioned using these microcontrollers to control radio controlled helicopters. Well, there's a group that have taken the basic design and created a specialist controller that links with sonar to detect height, with GPS to detect position and the various sensors for stability. They have done some amazing things and it is very exciting. So hats off to the folk at Arduino. But let's have a look at this particular product and uh, in close up. And this is the Arduino Leonardo. Now the Leonardo is uh, one of the more recent boards. It's only been out at about six months and we're recording this towards the end of 2012. The important things about it are these two rows of connectors, one at the top of the board here and the other at the bottom of the board. And this allows you to connect analog and digital signals to the controller. And uh, what do I mean by analog or digital signals? Well, if we take analog uh, inputs, it could be a variable voltage from some sort of temperature sensor. Or it could actually be a switch, which is either on and off, which you could also say was digital as well. Or a digital input could be some from some other device or sensor. And it has multiple, I think off the top of my head for the Leonardo has 20 different inputs or outputs. And you can use the outputs to switch things on and off, to control LEDs, to control relays for switching more powerful equipment. It really is exciting. And the other thing that the Leonardo uh, has are two connectors on the end. One is a USB connector, which is you use for programming the board. And also, as we do, for pretending to be a keyboard, and there's a power connector. You don't need the power connector if you are using the USB because you get your power from the computer. So that is the Leonardo. Now the next one we're going to look at is a, a board, the tiny board, it's called the Teensy Duino. And you probably get from that name as it's got Duino in, it is a derivative of the open source the open projects that Arduino have. And this is the Teensy Duino. And as the, as the name suggests, it is very small and ha just has a USB connector. And the pins for this are actually on the bottom of the unit. And you can see there, there are two rows of pins. So not quite as flexible as the Leonardo, but still a, a you know, small and useful 
microcontroller for doing some dedicated things. And that's much easier to put inside a little box if you have a specialist controller doing something for you. Now the third device we're going to look at, we're cheating here a little bit because it isn't really a microcontroller. It's really a microcomputer in its own right. And that is the Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi as it is a fully fledged computer. It has a connector for HDMI. It has an ethernet port on it. It has two USB connectors. It has uh, audio output, it has composite uh, video, and importantly, it has all these connectors here for create connecting I.O. device. Now, this board isn't that expensive either. This is retail price is about £30 or, 30, or $45. All very exciting. The Teensy Duino the price is around uh, $10, uh, £10, $15. It is very cheap and it uses the same development environment that the Arduino uses. So this, these are really exciting. They are all low cost. So with, with one of these and a handful of other of components, you can start doing exciting things and connecting to the outside world. Now we're gonna be concentrating on using the Arduino as we roll out our videos and create content uh, for you. There are other boards out there from other manufacturers and this, this industry is really getting some momentum. Arduino have just released a new board and it's called the Dew. This has an ARM processor, which is a very powerful processor. It's just starting to ship and we've got one on order. Hopefully you're excited, but you might be thinking, well, I haven't got any experience. I'm not a programmer. I didn't really concentrate in my electronics class. I probably can't uh, do this and you know, can I really cope? And what experience do I need? Well, none is the answer. We hope that anyone will be able to follow our foundation videos. And if you enjoy them and have a logical mind, then you will be able to develop projects of your own. So why are we starting You Control It TV? While there is some very good information on the web, there is a lot that really isn't that good. We found many YouTube videos that had no audio and all they were doing was showing something that might be interesting or it might not be. And people were just saying, hey, I can make these lights blink. But they didn't say how they did it and we found it very frustrating. So what we wanted to do was to create one place where people can learn, find information, get ideas and help for projects. And that is what we are going to deliver. We're going to provide introductory videos, foundation courses, starting with the Arduino. We're going to have building block projects. That's where we take an idea and demonstrate it. But really, the idea of that is that you take it and combine it with other things to create your own exciting project. We will also look at some more advanced projects, building prototypes of more complex projects that will work as they are, but will be a great starting platform to take them even further. We'll cover product news, updates on new products. We're going to review the hardware and the software tools. We'll even give you some construction tips. It's a long time since I learned to solder and it might be useful in some of these projects to get your soldering skills improved. And we'll even do a video of how to solder. We'll provide resources, links, to books, to websites, and to software that you might find useful. This really is going to be a fun ride. We've had so much fun and enjoyment from our Arduino projects and using the Raspberry Pi that we just wanted to share that with you. So for more information, do check out our website at youcontrolit.tv. You can follow us at Twitter at youcontrolit.tv. And if you're watching this on YouTube, that's great but please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you'll join us again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.